Hi, in this portion of the course, we're going to take a look at Foundation of Technology Integration. We will look at not only technology integration philosophy, but we will also look at technology integration applications. So by engaging in the activities throughout this module and this part of the course, you'll have an opportunity to tailor your experience to your needs. That is, if something is new for you, you can spend more time there. If something is already familiar to you, you can review it quickly and move on to something else. This presentation serves as a preview of some of the research you will do and see during this part of the course. So let's start with the question, what is technology? Instead of assuming that everyone defines technology the same way, let's look at some examples. If we argue that all the items pictured above are technology, some people are wondering what these things all have in common. Before we reveal it, let's define technology as we'll refer to it in this course. So what is technology? It's anything that solves a problem. In light of our definition, let's return to the examples we looked at before. You can pause the presentation to think about what problems are solved by each of these pieces of technology. A television, a pencil, a spear, a microphone, a wrench, an iPad. So again, what is technology? The two main goals for integrating technology is that it should support specific learning outcomes and that it is used so seamlessly that it doesn't feel like it's an add-on in your course. We aren't just using technology for its own sake. Rather, we are using it because it helps students learn something better than they would have without the technology. Technology integration framework. This presentation will briefly introduce a variety of frameworks used to describe how technology integration happens in schools. It is not that any framework provides a complete picture. Instead, each way of thinking about technology integration highlights a different focus area. And counting this variety will help expand your view of how teachers are incorporating technology in different ways and for different purposes in the classroom. All of these frameworks are included in the links you'll explore throughout this part of the course. Universal Design for Learning is one framework. Another framework is the SAMR model, the concept of 21st century skills, the ISTE standards, digital citizenship, and the TPAC model. So let's take a look at Universal Design. Universal design is a framework about how the world operates to provide equal access to all people. It is the reason that sidewalks have curb cuts and there are buttons on doors to most public buildings. At first glance, these appear to be accommodations for people with disabilities, but they also happen to benefit all people. A curb cut and door button are necessary for someone in a wheelchair, but also benefit a parent pushing a stroller or someone whose hands are full of stuff on the way in the building. Universal design is about making the world a more functional place for everyone. When we connect that concept to learning, we get universal design for learning. The question is, how can we design learning experiences in which all students, including those with learning exceptionalities, can access and engage? While we might incorporate an accommodation for a student who needs it, it can also benefit other students. Technology is a common example of a tool that can level the playing field for all students to engage in learning. So as we look at universal design for learning, we have effective, the why, we have recognition, the what, we have strategic, the how, then as you look at each going down under the why, we have engagement and motivation for learning. For recognition, the what, we have representation and present information in different ways. The strategic or how, we have action or expression, differentiated options for students to demonstrate learning. So this follows the why, what, and how philosophy. Let's take a look at the SAMR model. The SAMR model is a way to represent the different outcomes and purposes of using technology tools. The bottom of the diagram is considered the most basic form of tech integration, and as you move up the diagram, the use of technology represents more and more advanced integration. As you explore the SAMR resources, you'll see examples of each level of technology use. Sometimes, when you're utilizing technology, you want to be at the substitution level. That is not necessarily bad. Other times when you want to utilize technology, you want to be at the redefinition level. When you look at this from going from the bottom to the top, the bottom two, substitution and augmentation, really have enhancement in mind during the learning experience, meaning we're taking something that we did before and we're enhancing it and enriching it with technology. Transformation at the top of the SAMR model includes modification and redefinition. When we're talking about these, we're talking about truly transforming the educational learning experience. 21st century skills are seen as some of the most important skills to be successful as a citizen in a digital and connected world. There are a variety of ways we promote these skills in students. So when we think of 21st century skills, there are life and career skills. There are learning and innovation skills called the four C's. 
There's information, media, and technology skills. And of course, there's the key subjects, the three R's, and the 21st century theme. So when we talk about 21st century skills, we're really focusing in on how can we use technology to help students critically think, communicate, collaborate, and be creative. Now we're going to look at ISTE standards. The International Society for Technology and Education, which is also known as ISTE, has developed standards for both teachers and students around what role technology should play in education. For teachers, they address what it means to be an effective teacher in this area, and for students, they address what it means to be a successful learner when navigating in a technology-rich world. Digital citizenship. Just as citizenship means being a productive member of society, the concept of digital citizenship means being an, a productive member of an online and connected society. These nine themes represent the ways members of the digital world interact, contribute, and consume online in each of these areas, there are critical concepts to consider, especially when we think about the vulnerability of our students being constantly online. So if we look at these nine pillars or nine themes, we see digital access, digital commerce, digital communication, digital literacy, digital etiquette, digital law, digital rights and responsibilities, digital health and wellness, digital security. Lastly, we're going to take a look at the TPAC model. TPAC is a framework for connecting the areas of what the teacher teaches, which is the content or the content knowledge area. How the teacher teaches the content, the pedagogy, or the, or the pedagogical knowledge, and the technology being utilized, the technological knowledge section, it recognizes that these areas overlap rather than operating in isolation, which fits with the idea that we are not just using technology for its own sake, but rather because it enhances the learning of specific content and outcomes. So in the middle of these three circles, when they are overlaid over each other, you hit the sweet spot. The TPAC model states that if you are in this sweet spot, you are going to enhance, enrich, and make the learning experience a more enjoyable one for the students, as well as help them to learn at a higher level. 